Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another Historical Humans Reacts and on today's episode Italy is auctioning off a Holy Roman Emperor's castle to tackle public debt and it's not just any Holy Roman Emperor either it is oh it is uh Charles the fifth which yep. is an interesting one yeah so Charles V is a very uh famous uh holy roman emperor he is uh one of the big names uh from that uh uh we call it civilization we call it a culture the holy roman empire gets a little weird about that uh some you know being you know pre-germany germany, germany. <laughs> yeah they're neither holy nor they're roman they're pre-german germans but they're not prussia uh. <laughs> you know. But there's this uh, castle that was built for Charles V in the 16th century that Italy is auctioning off be to help pay off its uh, ballooning debt. Yeah. Yeah, and this, this raises a lot of questions like, what can or should governments do with the historic sites that they own? Um, you know, governments you know need to balance their budget, at least in theory. And I don't know. This, you know... This is kind of a this kind of seems like a very bad taste uh, effort, in my opinion, selling off your cultural heritage to the highest bidder. It's a double edged sword because you can understand it from a financial and fiscal responsibility point of view. Like there are e even with vacant buildings, old historic buildings, whether it's new, old, whatever, there are upkeep costs. There are fees that you have to pay you have to pay to have someone manage it you have to pay someone to look after it you have to do security like there are costs with holding excess properties and it's an it's a genuine issue but when those excess properties are culturally significant and culturally valuable don't you think there might be some like corners you could potentially cut in terms of the military maybe slash some f some funding on some other well, things because this is the defense ministry yeah, it is funny you should say that, because uh, that is the reason why they're able to get away with this. Is this is technically part of Italy's defense budget, because it is part of the it is owned not by um, a cultural ministry or uh, a ministry of the interior, but by Italy's Ministry of Defense, because it is again a castle. It is technically a fortress, and, and uh, it's that one is thirty three that they're trying to sell. Yep. Yeah, the Defense Ministry has 33 uh, historic sites that they are trying to sell to someone, which is just, you know, if this was under a different department, I guarantee you they probably wouldn't have had the option to even consider selling them. But because it's listed as a defense, you know, budget property, you know, the military doesn't care. I mean, it, it, it sucks because of that, but the Capua Castle, which was originally built between 1522 and 1543 is honestly a master of military architecture and was significant for Charles V, whose empire stretched across Germany, Austria, Spain, and Italy. But one of the big downfalls, and unlike a nearby 18th century royal palace of Caserta, uh, this specific castle just really fell into disrepair. I mean, it like a lot of historical buildings, it went through numerous different points in its history where it served different functions and worked differently. Like, it was turned into a prison in the 19th century before being used to make and store military explosives. Like, you don't tend yeah. to have a lot of pretty artwork hanging in a place where it could go boom. Yeah. So, it's it, it just it sucks. And then the real, I think, smoking gun to this is it's these properties are said to have a market value of potentially... 240 million euro which is so much money like that is a significant portion yeah yeah and uh one of the uh one of the big uh one of the big uh points of contention um with uh this castle in particular because this is only one of 33 sites that's currently up on the chopping block here um the big point of contention is that there is a push going on as this is happening for this site in particular to receive UNESCO recognition for its significance as a part of the Holy Roman Empire, uh, as a part of Italy's history. So, like, there, you know, 
they're selling it off well it is more or less being put forth to the united nations for review as a site of outstanding cultural value which you know that, that's kind of an insult you know selling off your unesco world heritage sites this is like the u.s government trying to sell misa verde to elon musk see you say it like that and then the the sentence that really i think is a bit of a dagger is the ministry said the properties would be sold under concession for 50 years which is pretty standard for these kinds of deals yeah. but it was looking for pro proposals aimed at the redevelopment enhancement and economical management of its real estate assets they are looking to potentially redevelop it and they are admittedly trying to designate it for potentially doing tourism but that means they're going to accommodate for the tourism you know and that could that could really span anything from opening shops in the ground level of the castle to opening like Airbnbs where you can live in a 15th century Roman castle, like that kind of thing. I mean, there's a lot of things that could redevelop, but real that, that term redevelop can be stretched real far when given to an architect or an engineer. And that redevelopment turns into a monstrosity. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, redevelop can be anything from sweep up the floors and put a gift shop in there to level the place. <laughs> um, uh, you can already see in the pictures, uh, in the pictures I've shown at like the top of the uh, article, like this place, it's it's overrun with shrubbery, it is in disrepair. You can see the addition of a smokestack from when it was from when it was originally working as a. This is not the exact palace of Charles V as it was in the 16th century and redevelopment lets you know architects and engineers go absolutely ham with shit like that and there is a certain you know it, th this place is in d dire dire need of renovation i mean you see the cracks in the walls you see everything i mean it was entirely stripped bare of its furnishings i know mm -hmm. a lot of castles that's what they usually display is their original furnishings and colorations mm -hmm. but this was a very vital castle, especially because it does sit along the Roman Appian Way. I mean, we yeah. recently just talked about that in a different episode, but this was one of the fortifications alongside of it. Granted, a, a significantly later addition compared to some of the other things, but still an important contributing aspect to it nonetheless. I think its cultural yeah. ties to, to Charles V only top that. I mean, yeah. I admittedly... and we speak from a very biased perspective because history is such a finite resource. Once it's gone, you lose it forever. So a lot of times people see things like this and they go, Oh, it's a blight. We could put, you know, a brand new 85 story skyscraper right on that site. And it have beautiful views over this hillside and everything. And you, you lose the castle, you lose the history, you lose that meaning that tie to the past. Yeah, you, you lose you, you lose the part of the town that showcases that yes, we have been here forever. Look at this, you know, look at this massive stonework. And the I guess the question we leave when we end this episode off, we'll we'll leave a question for you guys to end this episode off is do you think it's worth trading this cultural heritage for a few million dollars if it means potentially redeveloping into like an Airbnb or like tourist style? or if it meant to a skyscraper, and what's the difference? Let us know your thoughts, and we'll see you guys in the next video.